Let's review how to determine the electron configuration for transition metal elements, and particularly their ions. And that will be important because we'll need to know how many electrons there are if we're going to look at a high spin or low spin determining how many unpaired electrons there are in a complex. Well, we're going to need to know how many d electrons there are to begin with. So let's look at, say, iron, for example. So when we start off, the electron configuration is argon. Don't really care about the other things because uh, those are not the valence electrons, but argon 4s2 and then 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3d6. So remember, when we're determining the electron configuration of a transition metal element, um, we count over like that. Now, what happens when we have a transition metal ion? So say iron two plus, it's a typical ion. Where do, you, do the electrons come from? Do they come from the 4s or do they come from the 3d? Well, the 4s is an outermost shell, so they come from there. So since we need to get rid of two electrons, 4s2 is lost, and then we're just simply left with the 3d6 electrons. So this is a d6 um, ion. Now, if we went to iron 3 plus, we would lose the two 4s electrons and one 3d electron, which would bring our configuration to 3d5. Went from 6 down to 5 because we had to lose 1d electron. So let's just keep that in mind when we're determining the electron configurations of these. Now, you might say, oh, remember, there's those exemptions or exceptions. Uh, chromium has 4s1, 3d5, and to that I say, well, most of the time when we're dealing with transition metal complexes, we have either a plus 2 or a plus 3 charge on the metal. That's the oxidation state. And since we take away the 4s electrons first anyway, and generally the transition metal elements are plus 2 or plus 3, these 4s electrons are gone anyway. So it doesn't really matter. In fact, there are quite a few other exceptions on the chart, and there's enough that I don't actually remember all of them. I do know that the chromium is one and copper is one, but again, if we lose um, two, at least two electrons, then it doesn't really matter whether it was an exemption or not. Just remember that we take the first two electrons out of the 4s orbital, and then the rest come out of the d's. You'll be okay. Or you could care about the exemptions and um, do it that way as well.